Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone feeling today? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you, Father, for being our healer, Father. We thank you, Father, for being Lord of Lords. We thank you, Father, for being King of Kings. We thank you, Father, for being mighty. We thank you, Father, for being omnipotent. We thank you, Father, for being in complete and total control, Father. We ask you, Father, to just come into this place and come into, the, into this place with fire, Father. Set the atmosphere, Father. Set our minds, Father, ablaze. Set our hearts ablaze, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Set our spirits on fire. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that you are going to do a new thing, Father, in each and every one of us, Father. We thank you, Father, that you're going to spring us forth, Father. We thank you, Father, that you, Father, are God and God alone. And we thank you, Father, that you have never left us nor forsaken us. So have your way in this service. Have your way over your people. Have your way in this place, Father. We thank you, Father, that you're going to just do a new thing, Father, in our minds, in our heart sets, in our spirits. And we thank you, Father, that you make us complete. You make us whole. You make us who we are, Father. So we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's worship him. Amen. Amen.
Him. Nothing is impossible. Like we said in prayer, we are victorious. Yes. We have all power through Christ. Amen. 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 Who knows that the Lord is so good. Amen.
Hallelujah. So we talked about in prayer, sometimes we got to go out to some deep places. We got to be in some dark places. But thankfully, God is always there for us. Yes.
God, we thank you for your presence this morning. God, we thank you for taking us and calling us deeper. We thank you, Father, for your great mercy, your great blessings unto us. We thank you, God, this morning for touching us right where we are. Amen. Father, we give you praise and honor. If you have an offering, you can put it in the basket. If you're online, you can uh, see that it's pinned there. Father, I thank you. You are an awesome God, loving God. You care about everything that concerns us. You concern, you care about where we are emotionally. You care about the things that touch our lives. You care about us. And we give you praise for that today. Father, we ask you to open up our ears to hear the word and the message that you have for us. Father, help it to be one that gives us encouragement today, direction. Help it to, to give clarity on some things even as we move and as we have our being today. We thank you today, Lord God, because you love us. You loved us first, and then you taught us how to love you. So, God, I just give you the praise right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Today, my message is called The Road to Success, Doing Things God's Way. Amen. Now, we've been talking a lot about, over the last few months, we talked about birthing. We talked about producing what God has planted in us. Pastor James came and, and preached and reminded us on last Sunday that even with all of that, we have to now nurture whatever God brings out of us. Um, and I just want to build from there. And so I want to start with a few definitions. I feel like today this is, you know, you can shout, you can do whatever you want to, but I feel like we can right, just go into some deep study, if you will. So some basic things that we need to know. And it may seem like a very simple lesson, but sometimes we forget and we just need to be reminded. Amen. So the first lesson or the first definition I want to give you is for the word success. Now, what we see and when we look up the definition of success, it says it's the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's a very simple definition. Now, we take that in a lot of different ways. For some of that, we see that is, okay, what I'm accomplishing is generally outward accomplishment. Mm -hmm. we, we, did you get the money? So then you, then you must be successful. Mm -hmm. um, did you get the house? Then you must be successful. Right, right. Um, did you get the fame? Then you must be successful. You, you pushed everybody else out the way so you can get to the top and you made it to the top, so you must be successful. All of these signs are determined by outward things. Mm -hmm. And the problem with using only these outward um, things to determine success is we miss some vital points. Let me tell you what those are. First, a person can have a lot of money, but be dishonest. And, can, and they could have got it by dishonest means. But we look at the fact that they got money and say they must be a success. Or you could be somebody that got a lot of followers. Everybody, you know, is bowing down to you. You know, you the goat, you whatever. They bowing down to you. But the problem is, they only seeing what you put before them. They don't know who you are in the dark. They don't know that there could be hidden sins. There could be um, some things in you that are not a godly lifestyle. So then, if we know that there's this tension around what success means, how do we determine if we're successful? I'm glad you asked that question. So let, let's go on and let's see that. So that means we have to shift our understanding what success really means. Um, and so first, I gave you that basic definition of the accomplishment of a, of a purpose over aim. But now we want to take it deeper. What is godly success? Proverbs 16 and 3 says this. Commit your work to the Lord and your plan, plans will be established. So that's a little scripture, but can I tell you it's real meaty? Because it tells us how to be successful God's way. That means we have to commit something to God. What are we committing to God? Not only our life, but our work. Our aims, our desires, our aspirations. We are committing all of that 
that to God. Why? So that we make sure that we're not trying to be successful just based on what I want. It is what is God calling us to be successful in. Because then what is the outcome? The scripture says real clearly that your work, the things, your plans will be established. They'll be launched. They'll be promoted. They'll accomplish what they were supposed to accomplish. Why? Because you didn't make the decision by yourself on what you were going to do. You committed your work, your plan. You committed your purpose to God first. And when we commit that to him first, then we can see the things that we want. Amen. Therefore, godly success is achieved when we commit our lives to God. And the result is our lives will show his success, his accomplishment, and the things that he determined. And it is from that place then that we move that it's not just being successful for me, but there is something else God wants us to do when we are successful. His way is he wants us to create legacy. Can I say, hear y'all say legacy? legacy? So what is legacy? The definition of legacy is something that is passed on. But that can take many forms. You know, a legacy could be someone's faith. You're passing on your faith. Uh, it could be your core values. Uh, a le legacy can also be monetary. So I'm not saying success don't mean you got to be broke. I ain't saying that either. But that just can't be your main focus is I want to have money. So your legacy can also be monetary in, in your assets. A legacy can come from your character, your reputation, the life you live, set an example for others in their future, and a legacy should be something that's lasting that should impact the world in a good way. Because we can leave bad legacy, right? Mm -hmm. So you can leave a legacy and the folks know, oh yeah, when they talk about your name, oh yeah, that was the one that was always starting gossip. Oh, that was the one that was always nasty. That was the one that was always me. So we get to determine what kind of legacy we want to leave. We determine based on how we align with what God is calling us to do so that we can show up and be who he wants us to be. Amen. But also in this process of understanding success, I also want us to understand something else. The success does not mean you are perfect. Hello, somebody, please hear me. Success God ways does not mean I'm perfect. Success God ways does not mean that I am in, in, in that I can't be penetrated by upset or things that won't bother me. Nowhere in scripture, when you look at the folks in the Bible, who did God use? They was always just regular people. Some of them was jacked up. Some of them did stuff that was trickery. They, they got fearful. They had all, guess what? They was like us, right? And because they was like us, you know what that meant? It wasn't that we learned to lean on us, we learned to lean on God. And when we learn to lean on God, then we know how to show up and be successful. Amen. Amen. So what is this godly legacy when I talk about success? What is that? Proverbs 3, verse 1 and 4 says this. My son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. So see, even in this scripture, God is saying that when you will do things his way and are successful, you will be successful not only with him, but he will bring give you favor in front of men. And so who is the legacy for? He says, the scripture says, my son. As, the, as this the, 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 the proverb writer, he said, my son, the legacy is for those that have committed themselves to, to, to listening to you, for those that you have gained along the way, those sons and daughters, both naturally and spiritual. That's who you are building legacy for. Do you know what? I'm building legacy for you. I, I, I do the things that God tells me to do even when they're not easy. Hello, somebody. Even when they're not easy. Even when you want to quit. Even when you wake up, let's just be honest. Can we just be real honest? There are some days you wake up and go, why am I doing this? There are some days you wake up and say, this is real hard. 
It don't feel like it's going nowhere. I've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. And you know there's a saying that says when you do something over and over again, you don't see no different results. That's insanity. But can I add another definition? God said no. He said sometimes you're going to do the same thing over and over again and you don't see any results at the time you want to see them because it wasn't the appointed time. So when you do it over and over again, he said that's faithfulness. <laughs> he said so sometimes you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again because he's called you to be faithful. You just don't see the answer yet. But you you're going to keep doing it. You're going to be faithful. Why? Because he's called you to this purpose. So you don't give up. Why? Because you realize somebody else is dependent on me to be in position. Somebody is dependent on me to stay on my path because part of who, uh, part of what is going to be opened in their life is coming because I've been obedient in my life. And so that's what legacy is for. It's about us being able to say, I'm going to continue to do even if I don't understand. He said, and not only that, said, because length of days, years of life, things are going to be added to you. Stay steadfast in your love. Don't forsake, don't forsake being faithful. He, in fact, he said, buy them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart. You know what, you got, like I got this necklace around my neck, right? It got a little bell on it, so sort to of say. So every time I move, I hear it. Can I tell you something? When something is around your neck, you remind it that it's right there with you. Because you go over here, it's right there with you. You go over here, it's right there with you. God is saying, I need you to keep my promises so close to you, no matter where you go, you hear them. No matter where you go, you sense them. No matter where you go, you feel them. No matter where you go, you know that the promise that I gave you is still with you. Because the enemy of your soul, that's his job. He wants to come and try to discourage you and make you think that that's not who God calls you to do or be. And so when, when we hear the message, so I come like the Proverbs writer and say, children of God, hold on to the promise. Keep moving. Build the legacy God has called for you to build. Even if it gets difficult, keep building. Keep trusting. Keep having faith. Keep moving on. When the enemy tell you, oh, God didn't hear you, you tell him, oh, shut up, you a liar. Get up under my foot. I put you under my foot. I'm not listening to you. I'm not giving my ear to you. Why? Because God is a, he's faithful. And if he said a thing, he going to finish a thing. So then once we know this is the legacy, so then how do we live out this success? What, what is, how is success done God's way? Psalms 37 and 4 says this. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, godly success starts with how we delight ourselves in God. What does it mean to even delight? You, you take pleasure in, you're excited about, this is something you look forward to. Your relationship, my relationship with God has to be more than just I'm doing it out of duty. I have to, you have to have a joy about it. That's got to be a delight. You've got to be excited. Ooh, I get to spend time with the Lord today. I get to go to prayer. I get to read my word. Versus, oh, it's that time. Let me, I got to read my word. I got to, because guess what? You got to delight. This got to be something that you and I are excited about. And so part of our success starts with us making sure that our delight is in God, not versus our delight in is in the accomplishment. What do I mean? See, you can get a prophetic word today, and the Lord can tell you you own 40 businesses, right? That's exciting, right? But the problem is, many of us will delight ourselves in the prophetic or the word and not delight ourselves in the prophetic giver. The one that gave the word. We got to put our delight and our, our, our joy in the right place. We got to put it in God because the prophetic is not necessarily going to manifest the way we always think. Because, see, that's when we get in trouble. Because, see, we can hear, we get the 40, we got the 40 businesses, but you didn't get all of the instruction. So you got to take the same word back to God and say, okay, well, how does this happen? How do I steward this well? What do I do with this so that I can see the manifestation of what you have called for me to do? Because the problem is we can try doing it ourselves and get totally off track of what God has called for us to do. And so there's a promise when we delight ourselves in him. His promise is, he said, I will grant you what you desire. And that is part is in part why? Because if we spend a time with him, we ain't delighting in the wrong stuff no way. Right. Hello, somebody. Yeah. 
So that's why he gonna grant it, because he already know where your heart is. He gonna grant it to you because he's already taken time in our relationship for me to come to the place where what I delight, what I have a, a desire for, is going to be what is already approved by him. Amen. Let's keep going. What, what other ways are, 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 do we see success? God's way. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. See, godly success requires complete trust in the right thing and in the right person. Yes. It requires us to release our agendas, our ideas, our thoughts, our plans. We got to trust him. Who we trusted in? In the Lord. Not And, not, and we got to trust him wholeheartedly. It didn't say with all my heart. So I can't have this part of me that's saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you with that, but I'm good over here. I got, I got this. I got this. No, no, no. You got nothing. You got nothing. It says all. Oh, give everything that you desire. Give everything on your heart. Give everything, your life, your, your, your work, your, your health, every single part of your life needs to go to the Lord, and then you do not lean on your own understanding. Because you think about it, what does it mean lean? When you lean, you put your weight on something. See, if I lean on my understanding, I'm leaning and I'm putting weight on what I think I know. And it's not going to fail me. Because you know what? It ain't got enough strength to hold me up. See, but if I lean to God, guess what? He can hold me up. So I can't lean. I can't trust. I can't pull my full weight on what I, my understanding. Because my understanding is limited. I don't care how smart you are. I got doctor in front of my name, but I am not the almighty God. Uh, so I don't care how much... They gave me the title. I worked for it. Let me just say that right there. I worked hard for this doctorate degree. But in no way did it allow me to be able to stand in, you, in front of you and say, I'm all-knowing, because I'm not. So because I'm not all-knowing, there's only one that's all-knowing. That's God himself. And, and by way of the Spirit of God, I go to God and say, help me so that I can be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish. And there's a promise when we do this. The promise is you're going to receive the instructions to guide you. See, when we talk about needing uh, God, don't you know that not only do you need God to accomplish what he has said in front of you, you need his help to even understand who you are. Hello, hello. Why do we get tired? Why do I feel this? Why is this bothering me? Why? He answers the whys for us about us because we don't always understand it. We think we do. We don't always. So we can go to God and say, well, Lord, I don't understand. Why, why is this upsetting me? Or why am I feeling this way? And he can tell you, daughter, you need to go get some rest. Go take, sometimes it's as simple as go take a nap. <laughs> sometimes it's simple stuff. And it's like, go take a nap. You just need to nap. So your brain can get a rest. Your body can get a rest. See, he tells us stuff. And see, sometimes we get upset. We're like, Go sit down. That ain't that ain't the, that wasn't profound enough for us. We wanted we wanted him to be able to tell us something along the lines of, oh yeah, all of those people, all of your haters are coming against you. So I'm going to knock to that. Now, go take a nap. Go sit down. That's what you need. So sometimes we gotta just be willing to say, okay, Lord, talk to me and help me so that I'm able to stand before you. Amen. What else are we talking about? We talk about this godly view of success. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. Godly success is built on a submitted heart. That's real simple. You got to submit your heart to the Lord. You have to. Because if you don't, then this is when we find ourselves. You might get, see, because guess what? You can accomplish and get all of the stuff you want. You get the money, the fame, and all of that. But can I tell you something? It's going to be short-lived. You know why it's going to be short-lived? Because it was not gained the way God wanted you to gain it. You gained it, but it put, took God out of the equation. And whenever you take God out of the, uh, the equation, expect a fall to come because you built it on yourself. You didn't build it on the right principles. You didn't build it in the right way. God says, humble yourself before the Lord. And then what is the, the promise? When you do that, he will, he will exalt you. See, we got to go low so he can take us high. And see, part of what we don't understand about that is, but being humble also is the ability to wait. Oh, Lord Jesus, you mm -hmm. know. The wait, you talking about waiting on something? That's like you to just curse somebody out. You don't wait. I don't want to wait on nothing. I want instant. We are the instant everything. Instant oatmeal, instant miracle, instant blessing. Everything's instant, instant, instant. Can I tell you the way the Lord told it to me? He said, I'm not, I can work, I can work in the instant. 
But can I tell you something? There's some, it's almost like a grain of flavor in the waiting. But I, for those that cook, you know, he always give me this 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 this, this, this uh, illustration. You know, if you've learned how to use a crock pot, you know how you put the meat and the vegetables all in the crock pot, and you put it and you you set it to cook. Soon as it starts to do something, you start to smell the aroma, but you know it ain't ready yet. So you gotta wait for it to finish cooking. But the aroma starts to fill the entire house. And when you get in there and you taste that meat and taste that potato, oh my goodness, you be telling the Lord that was good. But you try to do the same thing, putting that in a microwave and microwaving it and nuking it, it ain't got no flavor. The meat tough, it's cooked in some places and raw in other places. He, God said that's what's happening with us. We keep trying to get these instant miracles, instant blessings. He said, and you won't let it marinate. He said, you won't let it cook. You won't let it deep in. He said, just be like that in the, in the spiritual. Uh, begin to sense it by way of the spirit that is already brewing for you. Just like you can smell that crock pot cooking. He said, begin to already sense it. Begin to already believe by faith that it's coming for you. So you begin to say, I pick up the sin in the spirit that God is working on my blessing. I pick up in the spirit that God is working on what I need. But I'm going to wait because what he got for me is going to be far better than if I tried to hurry up and put it in the microwave and get a microwave blessing. Amen. See, there's a purpose. There's a purpose. There's a purpose for why God says we got to start to shift how we see success. Amen. Matthew 6, 25 and 33 says this. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body what you will put on. It's not life, it's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than that, than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to your span of life? That's a good question because I would have to say nobody. In fact, you probably are shortening because you worry in yourself. Got your pressure all high. Okay, and why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Godly success requires us to trust God even in the basics. Amen. For the basic things. You need food. I'm going to trust God for it. I need clothes. I'm going to trust God for it. I need to, so, something to eat and drink. I'm going to trust God for it. Well, my money's short, but I'm going to still trust God for it. I, my health, but I'm going to still trust God for it. Why? Because his success for my life is dependent on me trusting in him. I got to believe that in me trusting him for the basics, then he can do the greater. See, that's what the enemy tries to do. The enemy tries to keep us thinking and get our focus on, on the everyday. Because if we don't see the everyday being met, how are we going to believe? for the great. How are we going to believe for the great? I, I, Lord, I can't pay my rent. So how am I going to believe you're going to give me a, a, a bigger bill? I, I, I'm not believing that, that I can get feed my children. So how am I going to believe you're going to give me a car or, or that you're going to finance me to get my education? How can I believe all of that? That is why the enemy wants to keep you in a place where you do not have trust in God for even the basic. But see, godly success requires us to stay focused on the one leading and not the things we deal with along the way. Can I say that again? God wants you to stay focused on him. It's real simple. I told y'all, it's really, for me, I feel like it's a basic Sunday school lesson, you know, Bible study lesson, but it's not so basic sometimes because we forget this stuff. When we're dealing with it, we say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. But when we're in the middle of, middle of it, what do we normally do? We be panicking, oh, Lord, the rent, I'm, oh, my God, oh, you know, we just fell completely out. But we have to say, Lord, I don't see it. I don't understand it. But you told me, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. And guess what? When he say, do not be anxious, that means he's telling us we got a choice. Amen. We got a choice. What do I mean we got a choice? We got a choice in how we look at it. We got a choice in how we approach it. I'm not saying it won't come. But even as Johnson gave her testimony today, sometimes you're going to hit those places where anxiety attacks you. But now you got a choice. 
You can let the anxiety, the fear, the doubt, you can let it overwhelm you, or you can say, okay, I'm going to take it back to God because he has already promised me he's going to never leave me nor forsake me. He has already promised me that he is a way maker. He already promised me these things. So because he's a promise keeper, he didn't just say it just because they sounded good. He said them because they are good. And when he said them because they were good, he said them because that's what he's going to do. So I'm going to take it to him and say, God, right now I'm in an anxious place. Right now I'm in a deep place. Right now I'm in a heavy place. Right now, God, I'm in a place where I don't see the answer. God, I know what you said, but it's not showing up like you said it. God, I'm just going to be honest. I'm fearful. God, I'm in a place where I don't understand it. Yet, I'm going to trust you because you have the answer. So I'm coming to you today, Father, and say, I can't lean on my own understanding. But then I say, I can't lean on my understanding. Because, see, my understanding of this is I should quit. My understanding of this is it ain't going to get no better. My understanding of this is ain't no way, ain't no way. My understanding is, oh, I ain't got no help. Oh, but then God says, oh, but my understanding tells you and reminds you that I am your God. There's nothing in this world that can touch you. Uh, there's nothing that the enemy sends your way that can snatch you out of my hand. God reminds us who we belong to. He reminds us. And the promise is, when we focus on what he tells us, we're going to have all our needs met. Through Christ, his riches, the riches that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's not that our needs are not important. It's just that God is filling them the way he desires to fill them. That's the part about this journey of success that don't always make absolutely no sense to nobody. Now, maybe y'all extra slave, maybe y'all more, more spiritual than I am. I'm going to just be honest. Have about 99.9% of the stuff I've gone through. I'd be like, Lord, that don't make no sense to me. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to understand. It don't make no sense. Why we couldn't go this way? This way look real clear and straight. You took me this way, down, up, over, this way, that way. I'm like, Lord, I'm tired. I done got dizzy just trying to keep up. Why we couldn't go straight? You know what he'll say. He said, because it looked straight, but it was some booby traps. <laughs> it was some traps along that way. I was taking you to the way that seemed hard, but it was the way where there were no booby traps. <laughs> there was the way where there's no landmines. I took you the way that I knew was the perfect way, even though to you it didn't make no sense. So God, thank you that you didn't take me what I thought was the straight way, because I was going to walk right into the landmines and blow myself completely up. Amen. See, God's understanding is way above us. What's this godly success look like? Romans 12 and 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Godly success requires a changed mind. Amen. Able to discern pitfalls, along the way. See, see, that was the discernment. God had to say, Joel, change how you thinking. Because see, you thinking if you tell me to go from A to B that it should just always be a straight line. It should just always be easy. And God said, no, it's not. And when you learn to discern, when you learn to change your thinking, then you understand that I'm not just, I'm not this God in heaven that just ain't got nothing better to do than just make your life hard. That's kind of how we look at God. Like, well, God, you just must, you just having fun making my life hard. No daughter. No, son. That's not my purpose. My purpose has always been one thing and one thing alone. To make sure you are ready for eternity and to help you be successful along the journey. That's it. That's it. He is preparing us for eternity. And along the way, there's some things he wants us to do because there's a legacy he wants to leave in our lives. He wants us to be able to go through these ups and downs because guess what? As you're going through the ups and downs, don't you know it's somebody coming right behind you that got to go through the same ups and downs that you did. And guess what? Because of how you dealt with them, you're going to help them be able to make it a little bit easier. See, you might have stumbled because nobody was in front of you, but because you figured out that was a spot, you walked around and the person watching you say, oh, I need to make sure I walk around that. Why? Because they didn't go that way neither. God will use you to make it easier for somebody else. Amen. He said, godly success requires not only a, a renewing of and a changed mind, but a renewing of the ideas about success. Right. See, when we, when we don't conform to the world's idea around success, but continue to allow the spirit to renew what we think, 
We're able to test what is from God, and we're able to know what is what is not. See, our ideas sometimes about success, and this is how the enemy will discourage you. You'll look, even in ministry, you'll look at somebody and say, oh, they opened a church and they got 1,200 people in two months. I've been a pastor for seven years, and we can't get past 12. And you would say, I must not be successful. God said, who said so? Who said so? See, we're looking at outward. I don't know why they got 1,200 in, in that little bit of time. That ain't my business. That's the one point. That ain't my business. That ain't your business. That ain't your business. That ain't your business. Mind your business. Sometimes we be too busy looking at what somebody else doing. We need to just mind our business. That's number one. Number two, I need to go to God and say, Father, am I successful based on your standard? And you know what he'll say? He'll say, yeah, daughter, because you didn't quit when it, didn't get easy, when, it, when it wasn't easy. You stayed in place. When you could have said, oh, ain't nobody coming, we're going to close the door. We're just going to go stay home. That sounded like a good idea. He said, yeah, but what about the souls that I've assigned for this building? What about the souls that I have? Woo, yeah. What about the soul? Woo, I felt that. What about the soul? Woo, woo, woo. Gee, God, I got my son. Woo, woo. Yeah. I got out of my son. Don't go and see. He said, what about the souls that I said I'm going to send you that were broken and you were going to be the avenue to help them find healing? Yeah, that's my son. If it ain't with five, it ain't with ten. That's ten. That's five. That, that might have been lost if you wasn't in position. Yeah, God, I my son. Woo. See, we are looking at success wrong. We're looking at success based on what all they say. You read the, anybody here read the book of Jeremiah? That brother went through a whole bunch of stuff, right? When you get to the end of the book, you waiting, if you're waiting for him them to say, Jeremiah, thank you for giving us the same prophecy over and over again, and you were obedient to God, and you did everything the Lord said to you, go, you need to keep looking because there's nowhere there. He ain't getting no parade. They ain't talk about it. In fact, it almost just seemed like the book just kind of ends and he just fades away. You don't see that. that, that you're like, well, what happened to Jeremiah? Guess what? He was successful. Not because the people did what he, tell, though, what he told them, because they didn't. You know why he was successful? Because he did what God told him to do. He did it over and over and over and over again. That's how we know we're successful. You doing what God told you to do, if nobody else is in agreement, then you keep doing it. Why? Because God says, I am the one that determines if you are successful. I am the one that determines. Because he said, what I have called you to do is leave a legacy in this earth. See, they could never, see, you, you, some of your legacy gonna happen, people gonna find you years later. The people ain't gonna know, they might not know about you now. They find stuff years later. It amazes me. I have been doing social media since 2004, right? Not because I wanted to, this is what the Lord told me to do. So I have a YouTube channel. And I would do these. I started because at the time I was teaching girls Sunday school. And a lot of my girls were now going off to college. And I had to figure out a way to still keep them connected. Because some of them was like, uh, Pastor Jewel, well at the time they were just calling me Sister Jewel, they called me Teacher. Teacher Jewel, these, these, these um, churches in the college, they were like, this ain't church, this ain't church. We need church. So I would send them study books, and then I started doing these little videos. I would do the Sunday message and the Wednesday message. It was called College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I would do these things. I dragged my poor daughter into it. She was doing, we were doing the Thursday prayer. So we were doing this. So my presence was on social media. Did nobody know me? Nobody knew who I was. They wasn't nobody following. I had one person one time make a comment and it was gross and I just deleted it and went on. Nobody knew me. I come back years later sometime. It's one, I, one of my videos just recently popped up that had over 9,000 views and I was like, what did I even say on that video? I had to go look at it. But this is what the Lord began to talk to me. He said, legacy is not about you. Legacy is about me. See, my voice, his, his words, my teaching, which were his teachings are out there. I don't know who he gonna bring in. I don't know who gonna be Googling on, on Facebook or Googling somewhere and need something and God will pop that up. But I left the legacy. What about I been like, nah, ain't nobody listening. I ain't finna, write, I ain't finna do this no more, I'ma quit. Cause, cause, can I be honest? I done tried to quit so many times. How many of y'all have tried to quit? Just be honest. You done tried to quit. You done tried to quit. Yep, yep. Just be honest. You done tried to quit. You done tried to quit. But God says, no, you cannot quit. I have need of you. There is success in you, and success in you looks like what I determined it looks like. It's not based on what somebody else says. It's determined by what I say success is in you. And as long as you live it out my way, 
He said, you'll be successful. Philippians 4 and 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Godly success requires us to have a heart of the intercessor instead the mouth of a whiner. Ouch. That's what he said. I, I just wrote it down. That's what, I, that's what he said. He said, in order for us to be successful, he said, we're going to have to take on the mantle and the, the posture of an intercessor. He said, because too many of us are whining. We're just whining. Lord, you promised me this, and then it don't come. Well, Lord, why did this ain't come? Lord, forgive me for all of the times I don't want it. Because let's, let's be for real. This is, this is transparent day. This is all about you talking to yourself. You know you was whining. You was like, well, I ain't, it's not really. I'm just, I'm just really expressing what happened. No, you're not. You're whining. This is tough. You're whining. You're whining. You're whining. You ain't expressing. You just, you're venting. But your vent really has become a whine. You're just complaining and whining. And God is saying, don't be anxious about that. But in everything, your health, your marriage, your money, your children, your job, whatever it concerns you, everything, my promise, your gifting, your mission, my assignment, everything, he said by prayer and supplication. He said, first, thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. So that means I got to come before him before, with, instead of a complaint, I got to come with thanksgiving. So think about this. Lord, I thank you today, even though I've had those that have attacked me. I thank you because even though they attacked me, I thank you that you protected me. Versus, Lord, here go days, pay by my bad me, I dad. <laughs> He said, so we got to change how we come to him. Because it's not easy. I don't know how. We don't always know how to be thankful in the places where it's hard. But you go, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand why my body is not responding to medicine. I don't understand why, why my marriage is not doing. I don't understand this. But God, I'm going to thank you anyway because I'm still here. I still have an opportunity. I still can come and ask you because you already told me that I can come and make my request known to you. So if I ain't thankful about nothing else, I'm thankful I can come bring you my request. I'm thankful that I can come ask you. I'm thankful that you didn't cut me off. I'm thankful that you have a listening ear to hear what is my concern. Amen. So our godly success requires us to count our blessings and to really show up for our battles. Jesus. Yep, that's what I said. Many of us, we want to whine, but then we don't want to show up to the battle. We just, we, we got this mentality of God, you just fix it, and I'm going to go take a seat right here. No, no, no. There's a part we have to play. Yes, he is the one that wins the battles for us, but we got to still stand up, still show up, and be in a position where he tells us to be in position. And some of that is for your own healing. It's too many people that I've seen want somebody to just take this magic wand. <laughs> now you are healed. That ain't how it work. Because even if God did bing, you got to change something so that you don't get, you know, it reinfect yourself with the same thing. So you got to change your mind. You got to change your expectation. You still got to do some work because even if he healed you, if you don't change who you are, you'll still end up the same way. I know that's what he told me. Maybe, maybe he gave y'all something different. Because he told me when I was first asking him to heal my body so I could come off all of this medicine that I was on. I was on like four medicines for high blood pressure. I was losing my eyesight. I was 55 pounds heavier. And I was like, Lord, you are God. You know, just do the miraculous. Let the weight just fall off. And, you know, Father, just heal me of all this stuff. He showed me a picture of me holding a fistful of Twizzlers. That's my candy of choice. And he was, I was holding this fistful of Twizzlers. And he showed me like I was offering it up to him, but I wasn't letting go of the Twizzlers. And I was like, well, Lord, what that mean? He said, no, daughter. He said, I could heal you instantly. He said, but what would have changed in you? Nothing. He said, you would then actually, it would be worse. He said, because then that's how you would always want me to fix stuff. You want me to fix stuff. Lord, this is broke. Fix it. Boof. Poof. And I would never want to do no work. He said, so no, you're going to work your way through this. He said, you have to change your diet. You have to follow my instruction. He said, but when you follow my instruction, you will have success my way. Why? Because you're going to do it my way. And I tell you, I did. I lost 55 pounds. I, my, I stopped with the popping in my eyes. With my, I'm off of three of the four medicines. I'm only on one lap. But guess what? I'm actually 
actually healthier now than I was before then. I'm healthier at 60 than I was at 30. Why? Because I tried God's way. And when you try God's way, success comes in more ways than you think. See, I thought it was just I was going to lose some weight. Now. No, the success came because he made me able to move and do what I need to do to carry the mantle that I need to carry because God's glory got weight. See, I, I had to allow him to do what he needed to do with me so that I'm still here and fit for the journey. So when we let our requests be known to God, we can receive his peace, we can receive his joy, and we're over, able to overcome the doubts, the fear, and the anxiety that tries to make us quit. Whew, let me keep going because I got a few more. Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. See, godly success requires us not only to know the word, but it must become part of our daily declarations. It's got to be who we are, not just something we do. It has to be who I am on the inside. It has to be something that's deep down in you. Godly success requires a heart to be careful to treat God's word as life's direction. See, I can't just say, I can't, you know how you see people, they read the word and they just want pieces, they'll cut pieces out to just prove a point. This is not for you to prove your point. The Bible ain't here for you to just be able to slap people over the head so that they, they can, you can make them believe what you want to believe. And you better believe it first. You better live it, eat it, drink it, sleep it, wake up with it, go to sleep with it. Why? Because when you do that, it allows your heart to be ready to carry the word God's way for the success that he wants. And the promise is when the word isn't far from us, then the promise of success of God isn't either. See, when, when, when we let his word be close to us, success is close. Success is close. God's success. I ain't talking about all of the other stuff. Now, again, I'm not saying you got to be broke to be successful. My point is success is more than just outward stuff. Some of your greatest success is that you're able to see your children saved. That's more, that's... To me, that's the greatest success. If I can look and see all of my children saved, living for the Lord, that's the greatest success. That's the greatest success. You, you see God changing people. You see what God does in your life inwardly. You see your brokenness is no longer there. You see that God heals some things. It might have took some time and some process, but he did it. That's success. Don't let nobody ever tell you otherwise. Also, in success and how you are being successful, and even when we said in prayer, how you're being victorious is the same thing. See, today you might have a, a, a place where you're feeling a little down and you're feeling a little out, but you got up, Amen. you came in, you said, I'm going to press forward. I might not even feel like it, but I'm going to press forward. Why? Because I'm not giving up my success. I'm not giving up my victory. And day by day, moment by moment, I'm going to keep walking into it until I see all of it fulfilled. Amen. Can I tell you, you're successful if that's what you did. Amen. You're walking in victory if that's what you did. Amen? Amen. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 6 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives, drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Godly success requires us to have godly associations. Amen. Godly associated. Now, I'm not saying that you might not have an assignment to somebody that's not saved, but your association, those that you're investing in, those that are helping you to build, they need to be godly as well. Because guess what? They ain't going to give you godly counsel if they ain't accepting godly counsel themselves. Amen. If ain't no godly counsel in them, how they going to give you godly counsel? Godly counsel, I mean, godly success requires us to be integral men and women behind closed doors because God sees all. See, we gotta, we have to be more concerned about my alone time with God than the five or 10, 15 minutes of fame that you get in front of people. Because if all you're living for is what the camera sees, 
your life is not going to be lived the way it needs to be. And the promise that God tells us is when we live upright before him, we're going to see our lives prosper in all things. Can I tell you, you can prosper in all things. So guess what? You can be rich. So I, I'm nowhere am I saying you got to be broke to be integral. You just got to be integral because you could be broke and still be it could still be wrong. Because there's some broke folks and they steal it. So it's the, it's the how much money you got in your pocket is not the determination. It's what's in your heart. And so we just got to be careful that we're not painting these wrong pictures because we've got the one picture where people is telling you, well, you got to make sure you put a thousand dollars in this offering or your finances ain't going to be what God says. If, if, did God tell you to put a thousand dollars in here? If God ain't told you to put a thousand dollars in here, don't you put two thousand dollars in here because you just put a thousand dollars in it. And now you broke and then you mad because well I put the, the the minister told me I had to put in a thousand dollars and then God was gonna give me this. Well first of all, let me help y'all out for a minute. That's a total sad bar, but let me just help you out because I cannot stand manipulation around money. I cannot. I cannot stand manipulation around money. I'm not checking nobody to see if you tithing or not. Whatever you give, I'm gonna put it down in the books. I'm not gonna be doing some place where they calculate. Okay, well you only gave through the year, you only gave a thousand dollars, so you only make ten thousand dollars a year. I'm not checking that. That's not that's between you and God. That's not my job. That's not my job. That's not my job. I give based on what the Lord tell me to do, right? I give my tithes and offering. And sometimes I will tithe to the church. Sometimes I tithe directly to a person because God may put somebody on my heart and say that sister over there can't pay her rent. So I go and give her some money to help her pay her rent. But I'm doing it based on what God is telling me to do. So guess what? Do not depend on or make, because what somebody told you to give in an offering, your only um, foundation for how successful you will be. Does that make sense? Thank you. Because that's not it. And at any time, if you see anybody in here doing that, you come, you come and pull my tail and say, uh, Pastor, when did we start making blessings based on just how much we put in the offer? We have not, and nor will we ever. Because guess what? You might not have no money. But you might give your time. That's your offer. Amen. You gave your time. You came in here, you cleaned the church up. You came in, you did this, that. That's your offering. You give what you can. As you read the scripture, it always say they gave what they could. They brought stuff. They brought money. They bought themselves. All right, so that was that mini lesson on giving. All right, Habakkuk 2 verse and verse 3. It's my last scripture. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end and it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. See, godly success has an appointed time to manifest. Amen. If God promised it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Sometimes many people get upset. We talked about that frustration on the way, right? But what if I told you we need to stop looking at waiting for something as though we're being punished? You're not being punished because you got to wait for something. Because remember the scripture said it had an appointed time. Can I tell you something? The moment God gave you the word for you, it already had an appointed time. If God said, like the example I use, if God said you're going to have four buildings, guess what? It already had an appointed time. So you can't do it. You can do whatever you think to try to manipulate and make it happen faster. In fact, you're going to slow it down. All you got to do is follow God's instruction. Why? Because he know what he was going to make it manifest. So the enemy of our soul makes us want to get frustrated when we got away. He wants to tell you, oh, maybe you're doing something wrong, or maybe this, maybe that. Can I tell you, no, it always had an appointed time. It always. It always. And I know the longer you wait, the harder it is to believe that. And, and can I tell you, I understand that? Because there's things now that God is manifesting for me. Some of them was 40 years ago. Some of them was 30 years ago. But he's manifesting. And then, can I tell you what he said? On some of them, he was like, daughter, you didn't miss it. It was always for that. But this is the thing. He told me, he said, but daughter, you held it. You didn't let go. 
think about it. You done held a promise for 40 years, 30 years. He said, but you held on to it. You were faithful in holding on to it. So now you get to see the rewards. Can I tell you, I don't care how long it feels. I don't care how long it seems. If God gave you a promise, hold on to it. Don't let it go. Keep praying on it. Keep trusting. Keep moving. Keep doing what he said. He said, it seems slow, but wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. He said, why? Because it's coming and it's not going to delay. Uh, the delay is not based on us. See, I could look and say 40 years ago, that was a long delay. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a long delay. It was never, when he gave it to me, it wasn't the time it was going to manifest. It was always for 40 years later. So it did not delay. When it was supposed to came, it seemed like suddenly to me, but God said, oh, this is the time. Now I open the book on this and the door is open for you to walk through that thing which I got for you. It's some of us that's waiting on complete healing. Uh, it seemed like you wait. Can I tell you? No. There's a door that God has got and he knows the appointed time. You keep doing what he told you to do. You keep fasting. You keep trusting. You keep praying. Because in the process, what he's doing is he's building your faith. He's building who you are. So when you walk through that door, you're walking through stronger than you ever thought you would be. You walk through stronger because now you got promises, even more promises than you had before. Godly success says builds patience in us. Ooh, and we don't like that P word, that P word, that P word, Jesus. Patience. It builds patience in us. I told y'all a story, Pastor Jane one time told me to pray. We was praying on our Sunday morning prayer, and he gave me the word patience. Y'all, we got with I still right here. I had to start crying. <laughs> I was like, Lord, because I'm tired of waiting. I'm like, Lord, this waiting thing is too hard. But I'm reminded, he says, daughter, it might be too hard for you, but that's why you can't lean on your understanding. That's why you can't lean on your own strength. He said, that's why I told you to trust me. In the process of your waiting, you learned how to trust me even more. In the process of your waiting, you learned how to lean more on me and less on you. In the process of your waiting and being patient, you learned how to give grace to others when, when things don't always go right. You learned how to give grace to others when, when they flip floppy like you've been flip floppy. When they up one day and down the next because they get tired. You learned how to give grace to others. You learned how to intercede for others because you know what that feels like when you're waiting on the thing and it just ain't coming. He said, you learned something on how to be a better representative for me even in the learning how to be a patient. See, godly vision requires us to follow wherever the path leads. You don't get to choose the path God does. I don't get to determine how my path is going to make a way. And can I tell you, the Lord said too many of us, that's what we're doing. That's why we're not seeing success God way. You see it. People will rise fast and we go thank the Lord. And then as quickly as they rise, they come back down and we go, what happened? God says, is what happened is they didn't follow my pain. They, they made their own way. He said, I don't want my God to, can I tell you, God does not want his children to fail. He don't want us to fail. He don't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed his way because he wants to build legacy for the generations coming behind us. It's people that I will never meet that, that 20, 30, 40 years from now may come across something that I wrote, may come across something that, that I put in the earth, and guess what? It will bless them. That's allowed. God allowed me to build legacy. And guess what? It's the same with you. Something you said, something you did may have changed somebody else's life and then it changed in their life. Guess what? It changed the whole trajectory of that family. There's people you don't even know whose lives have been, uh, uh, they may have gotten saved because of something you said to them. And guess what happened? Because they got saved, their life direction aligned to God's direction and now they're walking in purpose. You just don't always know just how successful you are. So don't make success be all about money. Don't make sex be all about outward stuff. Are you living a life that God says I'm pleased with? Are you living a life in a way that God says I can use you? Are you living a life in a way that God says I hear your prayers and I'm interceding? Uh, do, you, do you live a life that you praying for folks that may never see you? You could be praying for somebody over in Africa and, and, and God go and say I'm changing your life because that daughter over there prayed for you. You never see them, but you made a difference. Your prayers left legacy. Your prayers made a change in this world. Father, we thank you today right now with the name of Jesus. 
God, we thank you today, Father, that you are doing something new and different in us. God, today, first we ask you to forgive us if we have had the idea about success in a wrong way. If we've been going after success, whether on our jobs, in our ministry, in our life, if we've just been focused on what we can get to, 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 to make us feel better, if we've been focusing on success just on money or, or fame, Father, forgive us. Today, we turn around and say, Father, we humble ourselves before you, and we acknowledge that we want to be successful your way. We want to move in your way. We want to build your way. Our Father, there may be people that never know us, but that don't mean that we're not known in the earth, uh, that we're not known in heaven. That Father, we thank you today because you have said when we follow after you, not only will we, we be find honor with you, but even with men, there are going to be men and women that you will send, and they may not even know why you sent them, but you have sent them because they have need of us. They have need of us on the inside of us. Father, I thank you today, Lord God, that you trust us with the assignments on our lives. Amen. Father, I thank you today that you not only trust us with the assignments, but you are building us to the place uh, where we can walk in those assignments. Uh, Father, and I come right now, this is a strange uh, uh, part of this prayer that I just heard. Father, I come and say forgive your sons and daughters uh, that have forgotten what their assignment was and heard another. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Father, I come as one of your apostles, and I speak to the hurt done to your sons and daughters right now in the name of Jesus. Father, and I ask you to forgive. I forgive us. Yes, hold us accountable for those things that we should not have done, but for those that have been hurt, Father, I pray you send your healing to them. I pray, Lord God, that you remove all hurt, harm, danger of the enemy, because the enemy tried to use it, God, to stop them from going forward. Father, I come right now for every broken heart, every false promise, every lie of the enemy that uh, somebody else did and, and released into the lives of your sons and daughters today, Father, I pray it's their day of release. I pray it's their day of healing. I pray today, Lord God, that they're able to step in and receive complete healing, Father, so that they can trust again, they can love again, that they can walk in purpose again. Oh God, I release purpose all over again in this place. Father, I release Renew our promises, God, that we're going to do what you have called for us to do. We're not going to let what happened then uh, stop us from moving now. And Father, we just give you praise for that right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I say thank you. I say thank you. I say thank you. Father, we thank you for complete healing. Even if we got to go through process, we say thank you, Father, because we walk in victory today. We walk in the promise today that we shall have and we shall receive it all. I hear the Lord say, and you will recover it all. The things that the enemy tried to steal from you, God said, I shall bring it back to you. Uh, the purpose, the ideas that the enemy tried to steal, God said, I, you shall recover it all. God, I thank you today that you are preparing your people for the next in their lives. Uh, Father, I thank you for just the, uh, the un unbelievable miracles and signs uh, that are going to break out for your people. I pray for those that are listening on the e-campus, and I pray for everyone in this building. Father, wherever your children stand in need of, God, I just thank you for releasing it in this building. Father, I thank you for releasing it in this building. Father, I thank you purpose, 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 purpose. You got a purpose for being here. Every lie that the enemy tried to say you're useless, we wash it away with the blood of the Amen. Lamb. Uh, even the things where the enemy tried to say your, your disabilities or your lack or this or that, well, it, it disqualifies you. The devil is a liar and there's no truth in him. God knew how he made you. He said, and I had, God looked at you and said, you are beautiful. He said, I know exactly how I made you. And if he know how he made you, he said, it ain't no junk. He said, I didn't make junk. God sight to yes, see Lord. the beauty in one another. Amen. Thank you, Father. Help us to see the beauty in your creation. Uh, help us, God, to see the beauty in one another. Uh, God is saying that this is the time that he is really calling us to come to another level in love, to shift how we love one another. Hey, we we want to love people that look like us. We want to love people that act like us. We want to love people if they fit in a perfect box, but that's not how they fit. He said, you didn't fit in a perfect box when I started to love you. Uh, so, God, I thank you that you love us how we are, and you teach us to love one another. God, I thank you for the outpouring of love in this season. Help 
this, Lord God, as a people. Help us as a church. Help the love of God to be so present in this place that it comes out in our message. It comes out in our prayers. It comes out in our presence. Lord God, not just the words, but let it resonate from our very hearts. Father, I thank you today, Father, oh, for the refreshing and the new renewing that I feel, Amen. even in this place. God, I thank you for the binding up the brokenhearted. There are those that are grieving. There are those that are discouraged. Father, I thank you today, right now, for a fresh infilling. Father, I thank you right now for your spirit refreshing us, giving us a renewing in our hearts. And God, we just say thank you. We 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 say thank you. God, we thank you today that we will be successful your way. Amen. Lives are going to be changed because we walk in our purpose. Destinies are going to be released because we walk in our purpose. Our families are going to be restored because we walk in our purpose. The lost are going to be found because we walk in our purpose. Deliverance, uh, healings, oh, the miraculous will be evident because we walk in our purpose. That we walk in the spirit of excellence to do unto you, God, what you have called for us to do. And in our own humanness, if we become tired or weary or discouraged, I thank you for the refreshing. I thank you for the renewing. Because God says you can't quit. Can I hit that? I can I tell you that today? God says to tell you you can't quit. It don't matter your age. You can't quit. You got to keep coming, sister. Because I can, can I tell you, every time you walk through that door, you bring sunshine in the room when you come in. God says you are a vital part of this house. Sometimes we feel like if I'm not the one preaching, I'm not important. God said you're vital. Your energy, your love, it's vital. You come in, we're excited to see you. Uh, that's what God says with each of us when you come into the place he said you keep coming it don't matter if you don't think you got all that you need yet you keep coming and keep coming and keep coming because eventually God in his time he already had the appointed time so he knows exactly when your breakthrough is coming he knows exactly when your shift and change is coming and father we say thank you today ah uh, father we give you praise we give you praise we give you honor Son, I just want to tell you today, the Lord says you are valuable. Can I say that again? You are valuable. He said there is value in you and nothing nobody can say, do, or otherwise is ever going to change that. He said and don't you ever receive it contrary to what God has called you to do. Don't ever receive what anybody says or even the things that have done in past. They cannot wipe out, wipe out what God has said about you. What God has spoken to you. What God even spoke to your mother in the womb about you. God said there are things about you that are yet to manifest. He said and you just keep trusting him to manifest them. He said you keep trusting him for the greatness on the inside of you because it is there. Nothing. And see this is the thing. Let me say this. People may do things to um like plant in your soil, so to speak. And the enemy tries to use that to plant um, discouragement or rejection or abandonment. But God said, I am the perfect gardener. And I come and pluck out everything that's not like me. I pull out every weed. I pull out every uh, the diabolical scheme. Amen. Because what is on the inside of you shall bring forth the fruit Jesus. that I have determined. And it's going to be good fruit, a uh, bountiful fruit in its season. So God says to you, son, he said, just dig into me. He said, just dig into me. He said, dig into me. He said, because I have the perfect plan for you. He said, this is the season where you will, will, will dig deeper into who he has called you to be. And it's not that you did not trust before. Uh, it, it is. But God says he is putting you in a place of Correct respect of men. Uh, he says, so you will see men and women and you will understand who they are, but if they jack up some stuff, it ain't going to jack you up. Amen. It's not going to jack you up. It's not going to mess you up. You're not like, no, 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 that was their issue. That's not mine. God says, I am giving you a razor-like focus on your future of the things that he has for you. So, Father, I just pray for your son right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for the assignment on his life. I pray that it's so clear, that it is so... Uh, 
uh, distinct for him to see and understand the direction and the way that you want him to go. And so, Father, I thank you right now for the shift that you are doing in his life. I thank you right, right now for the, for the places that you are healing, for the places that you are growing, the places that you are watering on the inside of him. Father, I see it blooming up in the name of Jesus. I see it rising up inside of you. Oh, there's a great intercessor even on the inside of you that God said he's going to raise up even more. It's something, now I'm not putting down women intercessors, but it's something about a man that prays. God says he's going to take you to another place of prayer. He said, because I have called you to be one that prays. And he said, and don't you know that some of these things that you went through are for a reason? He said, because now you'll know how to pray differently. He said, you'll know how to pray in a way to, to combat what you've seen happen to others and also combat what you see the enemy doing in the earth. So Father, I thank you for the anointing on your son. Father, I just give you the praise. I give you the honor. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.